Here's what we're going to be talking about this week on the All About Mac podcast. Apple tablet rumors, plus Apple announced and let loose its iPhone 3.0 update, plus we're going to be giving you tips and tricks to use to make you a Mac power user. All that and much more are coming out right here on the All About Mac podcast. Stay tuned. Welcome to the All About Mac Podcast. We're so glad to have you here. We know you're going to enjoy this show. Don't forget to go to our website, allaboutmac.co.cc. There you can subscribe, download, comment, and you can ask us your questions because we will answer your questions right here on the show. By clicking the Contact Us page, you can get in contact with us, fill out that easy-to-use form, and we'll get it and we'll answer your question right here on the show. Or you can email us directly. I have MacTips at gmail.com. It's now time to discuss the latest Apple news. All right, so let's hop right into our first bit of Apple news. If you plan on upgrading to Snow Leopard, you can go ahead and pre-order your copy at Amazon. For $29, Leopard users can go ahead and pre-order their copy of Mac OS X Snow Leopard, again, for $29. Now, only OS X Leopard users are eligible for the Snow Leopard upgrade. Tiger and earlier OS users will need to purchase either versions of the upgrade Mac box set. Also, Snow Leopard will only run on Intel-based Mac computers. Amazon also began pre-ordering, offering pre-orders for OS X Snow Leopard family packs, including the Mac box set, including Snow Leopard with iLife 09 and iWork 09, and Snow Leopard server. So if you go right to Amazon, you can type it in and pre-order yours today. Apple also released the iPhone OS 3.0.1 to address SMS security vulnerability. Uh, now, at a cybersecurity conference in Las Vegas, an SMS security vulnerability was disclosed, and Apple released an OS 3.0.1 update uh, to fix that issue. So, if you have an iPhone, iPhone 3GS, iPhone 3G, or iPhone Edge, as they call it, go ahead and get that update now to fix that vulnerability. An analyst claims to have seen a first hand prototype slate style computer from Apple. Following reports last week from the Financial Times that Apple is preparing a multimedia computer in the shape of a tablet with a 10-inch screen, the computer and industry executives are waiting with bated breath for what may be a final design from Apple within the next six weeks. One veteran analyst who has seen the first-hand prototype of the Slate-style computer from Apple says the device could be announced in September for a release in November. Whatever the exact dates, the computer industry is so anxious to see what Apple introduces that it held off on competing designs until the Apple CEO gives the device its final blessing. Says Ray, it close, it's close enough to a final design that in Asia there are no other products in the waiting room or in the bullpen. There are dozens of ODMs, original device makers, making products for Lenovo and other PC makers that are waiting to see what Apple will introduce. He also reports that the new device may retail for $699 to $799, and it could fulfill a variety of multimedia functions currently taken up by a gaggle of individual consumer electronic devices. The machine impresses with a display of high-depth video content, says the veteran analyst. He said it's better than the average movie experience when holding this thing in your hands. Now, people have been thinking that Apple would come out with a Slate-style computer for a while, now, I, for one, am hoping that it's more than just uh, a, a multimedia player such as a huger iPod Touch or a big iPhone. I'm hoping for a, a whole, like a laptop, like a netbook and an iPod Touch into one. That's what I'm hoping for. The price range is $699 and $799 sounds perfect. I already have the money just waiting for one of these new tablet devices to come out. I am waiting on the edge of my seat for an Apple tablet to come out that's full touchscreen, that's full Mac OS X, and can also run the iPhone OS. That is what I'm looking for. Now it's time for the App of the Week. Okay, it's time for the App of the Week. This week, it's Boxy. Boxy is XMBC with a newer look and social flair and many new functions. Boxy is a social media center. With Boxy, you can play videos, music, and pictures from your PC or from the internet. You can also share with your friends what albums you're listening to, what movies and TV shows you're watching, send recommendations, and more. Boxy's designed to work with a remote control because it looks great on a big screen TV. Plus, you can also control it with your keyboard. Once installed, Boxy scans your local hard drive for movies, 
music, and picture folders. Automatically, Inboxy will attempt to bring artwork, reviews, cast, and etc. for your media, so browsing the library becomes more useful and fun than looking at a list of files. Boxy is based on the best media center on the planet, XBMC. It's really cool because it takes, and it used to pull down Hulu TV shows as well, but Boxy takes your videos, you can get online videos, there's online video channels, I mean there's tons of stuff, TV shows in Boxy. Boxy.tv is the address. It's free to sign up, it's free to use, it's very cool, it is still not 100% done, there are still some problems uh, that arise when using Boxy, like it may freeze up, it, it might crash your computer, it might do some, such, some of these other things that a fully baked product might not do, but still Boxy's good, really does outweigh the bad, and the fact that you can use a remote control, like I can pull up my big iMac screen and just sit back on the couch and watch TV with a remote control is fantastic. So that's our app of the week, Boxy. You can find it at boxy.tv. This is the All About Mac Podcast. Alright, let's hop in into our tricks for today because we are all about telling you different tricks for your Mac OS X so that you can go ahead and be a power user for Mac OS X. How about getting your time then announced? No need to keep up time anymore. Here's how to announce your time in Mac OS X. Just go to your menu bar and there you should be able to find the clock display. Once you click that clock, choose open date and time. Go under the clock section and tick the checkbox announce the time. Mac OS X will use Alex or what voice you have set to announce the time. So imagine this, you're sitting at your desk, you want to know what time it is. Instead of looking at, taking your eyes and looking up, it, up there, Hey, it's very easy. Now, it's set to announce every hour, but there's also options for you to set the announcement to be made at intervals of half an hour or even a quarter of an hour. So it's not going to come up every minute and say, hey, it's 7.52, 7.53, 7.54. It's at an hour right now, but you can set it for half an hour or even a quarter of an hour. So go ahead and take advantage of that because that is very useful. A lot of times you open the find and browse through your files and... There will be the same directory shown in the first time you open Finder. We call it the Finder Home. By default, Finder Home is set to your user home, but maybe you don't need to visit that frequently. Maybe you use your pictures folder more often. Here's how you can make when you open up your Finder, it go to what folder. So let's say you want the picture folders. Here, like, here's how you can change that. Go to the Finder menu bar and choose Finder Preferences. Under the Preferences pane, choose the General section. Look for the only combo box and apparently it's used for the setting finder home. Choose the directory that you visit often and voila, the changes will be applied instantly and be shown when you open a new finder window. So that is, is that easy. So if you don't want it to go to home, maybe you want it to go to your pictures folder, your documents folder, your downloads folder, it doesn't matter. Set it the way you want it. Customize Mac OS X to work for you. Here's another one for you. Minimizing windows. This is a good one. Hit Command Tab plus Tab until you reach the application that has one of the windows, windows minimized. While still holding the Command key, press Option and then release the Command key. The earlier minimized window will be restored without any clicks whatsoever. So if you want to open a minimized window, it is that simple. I love using Command Tab because I like to use more keyboard stuff than moving the mouse around. And this way you can open up a minimized application without using your mouse at all. No clicks at all. So you you better take advantage of that. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of the All About Mac Podcast. We enjoyed having you on board. Here's how you can contact us. You can email us IHaveMacTips at gmail.com or go to our website allaboutmac.co.cc and use our easy to use contact form. Don't forget you can download this episode and more episodes plus view the show notes and more at allaboutmac.co.cc. This podcast has been a presentation of Technify Media Networks of Atlanta, Georgia. Bye-bye, everybody.